Well, who said you were good? Who determined you were good? The Bible says there is no good people. There are no good people. Also says every good and perfect gift comes from God. Mm -hmm. So when bad things happen to us, why do we blame God uh. and not Satan? If you're a Christian, this life is the closest thing you'll come to hell. Yeah. And right. if you're an unbeliever, this life is the closest thing you'll get to heaven. That's right. Why do bad things happen to good people? That seems like a profound question that everybody wants to understand, doesn't it? Everybody asks that question. I think it's the most popular question that I hear, you know, in, in terms of if I believe in God, ultimately they'll say, oh, you believe in God, then why do babies have cancer? That right. always seems to be the, or why do, you know, and I have to be careful how I say this so we don't get flagged, but like essay or abuse happens, like how come people are, are trafficked and how come challenging the morality of God because of the terrible things that happen on this earth? Why do bad things happen to good people? I, I think that question, uh, which is an interesting one, uh, is based on just what we perceive to be true. So if you believe a lie, uh, then that question makes total sense. And and there are people listening to say, well, then then tell me what why what lie I believe that would make that sense that that question make sense. And it's it's pretty simple. It's you believe that there is good people that we deserve good things. And I think in America over time we've we've learned subtle messages we've been taught subtle things that have formed in our mind that every person deserves good things and uh in the bible uh jesus is uh, uh a pharisee comes to jesus and says good teacher and he asks the question why did you say good it was an assumption that that there are good people and there are bad people and bad people deserve the bad things that come to them and good people. And it, it's really based on karma, this idea of karma. You get what's coming to you. Uh, you, you get what you deserve. And if karma I'm a is good my boyfriend, right. Karma and, is a God. Karma. <laughs> you love that song. Yeah, I have you? no idea what it oh, is. Oh yeah, you did the Taylor Swift song. Remember oh, we did is that? It? And, uh, okay. Remember that's, that's literally a song that's like super popular right now. It is. Yeah. Well, well, she must love karma, but the reality is karma is 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 in total contradiction to what the, the the word of God says. Listen, the Bible says there are no good people. Jesus Himself, if you call yourself a Christian, which means follower of Christ, uh, Alex was just sharing with me that there are people claiming to be Christian paganists. Uh, it's an impossibility. It's an it's oxymoron. A it's a cognitive dissonance. Like they don't understand what they're, it's subconsciously, I can identify it and see that way because you believe in God to leverage God to benefit your own, you know, unrighteous wealth here on earth. Right. But it has nothing to do with the relationship with God. So because God's just some God, like we were like pagans worship in order to sacrifice and get things in return. Uh, that I want from this God, we do the same thing to God. So our sacrifices modern day are, I go to church because I literally did this in school. I'm not even joking. I remember thinking, you know, and this is might be TMI, but I'm not going to watch before, you know, or I can't say that word. I have to say corn. I can't watch corn before a basketball game or the week before because I want God to benefit me in my game. Right. Like, and I'd be praying and, and I would get super religious at the free throw line, God, help him miss this free throw. I'll go to church. I'll do like, and I had this weird like idea of who God was and trying to manipulate him as if like the good things were going to be like, oh yes, that's what I needed. Like that God yeah. needed my good behavior because it somehow benefited him rather than seeing how it saved my own life. I had this weird, it's, it's Christian paganism yeah. that we treat God well, like a pagan and, deity. And I think, and I think that, that we, we think we deserve things. So 
we we want him to do things for us rather than recognizing this whole thing with God is about a relationship with God. Yeah. It isn't about it it isn't about treating him like an idol. Exactly. It's about I'm in relationship with God. And and I think what people like cuz then it goes right down to the very uh, aspect of whether we did we deserve heaven or hell. Um and we think if we we do enough good behavior, we would be considered good people, then we're going to go to heaven. And then, and then at what point are you good enough to go to heaven or you're not good enough mm. to go to heaven? Mm-hmm. And where's that line? And a lot of people would say, I don't know what the line is. I hope I've been good enough to go to heaven. Nowhere in the Bible does it even talk about your good behavior. In fact, Jesus said, if you're banking on being good enough to go to heaven, you're not going to heaven. Ooh. Because... The, just just the mindset that you're going to heaven because you're good enough exactly exposes the reality you think it's about your behavior and Jesus is saying it's about a relationship with me and when you are in a relationship with him it changes mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. The, this goes back to the premise why do bad things happen to good people well if you feel you deserve good things well why do you feel you deserve good things <laughs> Why do you feel that you deserve that promotion and the person, other person who's there doesn't You're deserve it? You're stepping on it. toes, Pastor. Why do you deserve it? Yeah, well, the the reality, but when you get in that mindset, then then bad things happen to good people. Mm-hmm. Well, who said you were good? Who determined you were good? Who 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 made that determination when the Bible says there is no good people? Ooh. There are no good people. No good thing. It, the Bible is very clear. It also says every good and perfect gift comes from God. Mm-hmm. So when bad things happen to us, why do we blame God uh, and not Satan? Uh, you, know, int- you know the cool thing that I heard? Not cool. This is kind of like sobering. But someone said, maybe it was you, <laughs> that... If you're a Christian, this life is the closest thing you'll come to hell. Yeah. And if you're an unbeliever, this life is the closest thing you'll get to heaven. That's right. Because again, every good and perfect gift, the blessing that you experience, this is what I think is ironic. It's like living in your parents' basement, like a like a 40-year-old living in their parents' basement. The parents feed them, the parents take care of them, they provide for them, and then the 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 person that's mooching off of their parents berates them with accusations, comes yeah. at their morality, treats them like a dog, and their parents are providing all the blessing and he's reaping the fruits of their labor. And in the same way, an atheist or people that are condemning God they enjoy the sunshine. They enjoy the blessings of their life and their relationships that every good and perfect gift that they they don't thank God for, but they sure do blame it, God when those things are taken away. It, it reminds me of the, you know, what's going on with the blind side oh, movie, yeah. you know. Uh, That's wild. I, I Maybe not everything happened. Maybe the whole adoption thing in that, which they say that the uh, Tui's, uh, didn't actually try to ad- uh, adopt or and but I'm thinking like but did they invite you into their home? Did they provide tutors? Like, I mean, it's like may okay maybe the movie was a little off on that, but did they not like? Does that erase all of the incredible uh, blessing that they gave in your life? That. So it's an interesting yeah, thing because it, 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 when you watch the movie The Blind Side, it, it like ruins the movie now. Yeah. You know, my, we saw it last night. It was on and we were watching it. My wife's like, I can't watch it anymore. It kind of ruined the whole movie. And I'm like, yeah, but there, there was good that happened in this. Mm-hmm. You know, the, what about all of the positive that came out of it? Where would he have been had he not been brought into the home? Mm-hmm. And uh, I think... Um, I can already hear people uh, <laughs> no, making can, comments on I all swear, of that because everybody hear. has an opinion about everything. Yeah. But the 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 thing that I think people have to understand is every good thing that happened to you, you didn't deserve it. Hmm. And they would disagree with that. Oh, I earned it. I'm the one who made that happen in my life. I'm and what I would encourage every single person who's watching this that disagrees, if you believe your point, I challenge you to do this. Because God's listening. Oh, I know what you're going to say. I would challenge I you to say to God say. right now, say, God, 
I don't believe everything that's good in my life came from you. And and I'm not giving you credit for it. Mm. So you can take every good thing you've done for me and take it and go home. Wow. Because I will live on only the good things that happen in my life. If you take that challenge, you will experience that even the breath you breathe was a blessing from God. You know, people who focus on the bad that happens to them are people who tend to miss the incredible blessings of all the good that's happening to them. Because every day, well, why do bad things happen to good people? Bad things happen to everybody, everybody. And there are bad things that happen, but there are also incredibly incredible things that happen. And the Bible says that God turns those bad things into good things in our life. Mm-hmm. He, can, he can take what was meant for evil by Satan and his demons, and he can turn it for good. Mm-hmm. But we want to blame God for something Satan is doing. Exactly. In our life. And then turn around and we're living in a culture now where they're trying to get you to believe that God's the liar, that God is the one who deceives, that God's the one that doesn't bless. He's getting people. When you start blaming God for the evil happening in your life, you're one step away from praising Satan. Oh, yeah. For things that you think he's doing into your life. The oldest trick in the book. Yeah. Made you look, made you look, now you're in the baby book. Like people fail to realize it might not be a tree, but you sure are choosing your own wisdom over God's. Yeah. The same trap Eve fell for. You're doing, it's the same thing now. It's pride. Pride is key. The reason why people don't know God is not because of a lack of evidence. It's a lack of humility and submission to recognize your poop stank. (laughs) You're not as big as you think you are. You got enough. My mom always told me because I was really stubborn and I was pretty arrogant and thinking that I was always smarter than them. And she'd always, you're getting a little bit too big for your britches like right now. Like, and I think there's a lot of people that they got some daddy issues and they're like some stubborn teenagers that have become a little bit arrogant uh, failing well, to realize they're still in their parents' household. And, and there's there's a scripture that says, uh, God opposes the proud, yeah. but he gives grace to the humble. Oh, yeah. So when people come in and they say, well, uh, that you know, why do bad things happen to good people? Well, describe to me what was so good about you. <laughs> describe to me what was so good about, well, this person is the nicest guy you've ever met, and God loves them more than you do. God loves them more than you. God created them. God gave you every breath. You know, the problem is that we think that we don't deserve hell, but from the time of Adam and Eve, they were deceived by Satan and death entered the world. And today, God was saying, Eve, don't eat of the fruit because death will enter the world. And Eve ate of the fruit. She did what she wanted to do. Mm. She, but... Eve was a good person. She just ate of a fruit. But she opened the door to Satan to begin to deceive all of us. Yeah. And when we were born, we were born already on the way to the lake fire. That's why it's such a stupid question to say, I don't I why does God send people to the lake of fire? God doesn't send anybody to the lake of fire. No. He he sends he he redeems and brings them to heaven and eventually a new earth. You are already on the path to the lake of fire. You didn't need God's help to send you to the lake of fire. God is trying to get you off that path. And the first thing you have to realize is you didn't deserve heaven. But if you think you deserve it and you think by your own behavior, you're getting into heaven, you're, you're being deceived by the very force that got us on this path in the first place. There's a verse and it's, it's actually the lament over Israel. Mm -hmm. And cause this is, I think this will, this will challenge people's view of God in his heart that God just desires that God is somehow, this is how people think God's sitting up in heaven. And we did misconceptions here. There's a video on our, our page where I went in the lobby at church and I was asking people because most like the people I'm asking, they're Christians now. And I was asking, Uh, because we just did a relationship series and the last sermon we just talked about was a relationship with God. And so I asked people, what was the biggest misconception you had about God before coming to the faith? And every single one was, 
a shot at the character of God. They, they are all different responses, but they all had to do with the character of God. He didn't care about me. Someone said he just thought God was here to just punish us. And that's how people view it, that God is, and it's really a pagan view of, of how we view God, very worldly view that God, like we're, we're being raised up and God is judging every minute detail and he's going to judge whether we're, we're going to heaven or we're going to hell based on our works, failing to realize that we're all headed for destruction. And it was Jesus that came and saved us from death. Yeah. That death was the curse. And I don't know about you, but I don't know many people that have ever you know, never feared death or have never had that been their demise. Everybody faces death. The gift of God was life. Yeah. Gave us life. Yeah, that's and, right. And the lament over Israel, I think this will challenge people's view because God like in his entire being longs for us not to face our consequences, not to face our demise, but that that'll be the the option for us if we don't choose to put the trust from here and to place it on Christ. And and, uh, and this is in Luke 13, um, 30, 31. It says, at that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, get away from here for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, go and tell that fox, behold, I cast out demons and perform uh, cures today and tomorrow. And the third day I will finish my course. Nevertheless, I must go on my way today and tomorrow and the day following for it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stone those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing. Behold, your house is forsaken. And I tell you, you will not see me until you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You, it's like if God forced people to do what he wanted he'd be a dictator exactly if god gives you free will god doesn't love me yeah it's like your choice god what he did and god is perfect in all of his ways he gave every single person that's watching this free will so you can disagree with everything we're saying and you can get away with that you're you 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 can believe whatever it is you want to believe but the one thing god doesn't have is your heart the one thing he gave away was your heart and your affection so that you could give it back out of love and relationship the in relationship there's an exchanging and you know at a wedding you exchange rings uh, there's in a relationship, there's an exchanging of affection of some sort. So uh, you're usually not friends with people who uh, don't exchange their attention, their affection to you. God, the only thing God does not have is your heart because he gave it away. He gave it to you and he wants you to give it back to him. And it's your choice. You don't have to. You don't have to do that. But he created the universe for people who would give it back to him. And you're saying, well, I don't want to live with him. That's why there's a lake of fire. So you could live without him. And I think you underestimate because you don't think the presence of God in your life currently, because you don't believe in him, makes any difference. But in the lake of fire, you will recognize the absence of the presence of God, which is separation from God, and you will realize how incredibly powerful his presence was even when you didn't believe in him, even when you didn't accept that he existed. And 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 the reality, I really want to get back to this mindset, this lie, is we really do believe that we deserve good things. We deserve it. And we say, why does bad things happen to good people? Well, if you're a parent listening to this, I'm going to ask this question of you. Uh, Why do bad things happen to your children? If you're a loving parent, why do bad things happen to your kids? Aren't you watching them? Aren't you telling them what they should be doing? Aren't they listening to you? Some of you have teenagers and you're telling them what to do, but your teenagers are not listening to you. So let me blame you as a parent for why your teenagers are not listening to you. Aren't you a loving parent that you would make your teenager listen to you? It, it, it's not even, if, are you sure you can make an argument against it? It's not a, you're not going to make a strong argument against that. It's, it's like we can't make our kids do things that we know are good for them. And God says, I gave you will 
a will to decide whether you would trust me and follow me and experience the blessing of my wisdom, or are you going to do what you want to do? And that's where a lot of people are at. And this is, I think this really shows the heart behind how people think. When you think you deserve life, because yeah. you think you deserve life, God plays a factor in taking that from you. Like he's the one that removes it. Right. He's he not the sent savior. you to the lake of fire. Yeah. Because I deserve to live forever, but he took me and sent me to the lake of yeah, fire. He's not the savior. He's a criminal. Right. And there's a guy, and this this is what I want to show here. There, I have a, a comment um, on one of my videos. And there was, like I said, I told you that there was, remember that time I, I posted this video and I was talking about, I was really trying to showcase the grace of God and how he mm -hmm. saved us and the mercy of God. And then people, there was this ex-evangelical that just twisted everything I said, um, kind of like the person they serve, and just misrepresented my argument. And so then tons of people were responding and saying all this this stuff and saying, your religion deserves no respect, this and that. But this kind of really shows as far as, because all of them, I swear, were like the same comment. So this is a good mindset of someone that thinks that they deserve life. And then because they deserve life. They attribute evil with God. So this is what Cleb Heath says. So you can be a horrible person, but as long as you believe in Jesus, that's cool. But if I'm a good non-believer, I'm the problem. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, that that's the mentality that your behavior being a good person is what gets you to heaven. And then you've earned heaven. It's not a free gift. It's not grace. And that's where the Pharisees were at. The Pharisees had moved to a place where they had said, uh, you eat with sinners. You eat with sinners and you bring them in and then, and then we're not, and, then, and you're telling us we're the evil ones? Well, it's, it's, a, it's all based on behavior. That's what religion does. Religion bases everything on this. our behavior. You earn it. You, if you're good, a person, then you earn it. And 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 keep in mind, and and because this is this is where people like to um, really uh, kind of get off and and twist what's being said. When you come to Christ and you have a relationship with Christ, and the Holy Spirit comes and lives in you. It will impact your behavior. Exactly. Faith without works is dead. Exactly. Faith, it, it, Jesus even tells the story. When the root is good, it creates a good tree, and the tree creates good fruit. When the root is bad, it creates bad fruit. So when the person says, I'm not a believer, but I'm a good person, well, that what, what is that based on? Yeah. What, what are good. you basing that on? Do you cheat? Are you gossiping? Are you envious? Are you a glutton? Are you prideful? You know, I, I think, uh, like, why, why are you thinking you're such a good person more than someone else that uh, may be different? It, it, it may be, you know, you know what why? line do you say they're not as good as you are? You want to know why I found people think that they're good? Why? Because the answer key in which they base themselves as being a good person is to their left and their right or the criminals on the news. Yeah. You know, it's interesting and, and it's true even in the church. Everyone else's sin is worse than yours. Oh, yeah. Like we give ourselves the benefit of the doubt. Like we, we think what we're doing isn't as bad as what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. It's a very easy thing to get in. So the to whoever that club guy is, uh, uh, who said you were a good person? Tell me who the good person is. Who's the person that's so good that you would say they're the one you're talking about, but they can't. It's all it's all hyperbole and hypotheticals and and it's foolishness. Mm -hmm. It's not, and, and when you with that mindset you will god will never be god will never be good yeah repentance is understanding oh my goodness like until you realize the weight of your sin and your imperfection god's not a good character because he can never be your savior because what was ever wrong with me yeah this is the other thing i think the other lie that we're in one we all deserve uh good and that bad should never happen to us. Which if you even ask that, does anyone ever, should anyone ever go through bad? 
Hmm. People are like, it's not reasonable. Then what's the point of the question? Hmm. Here's the other lie, that there's multiple truths. There is only one truth. Exactly. And the, the lie that they're trying to pass off right now is that there is no truth, that there is no actual truth to any of this. Then what is all the discussion about? Why are we having all this debate about what people think? And the reality is, if you're, if you're listening to this and you don't like what we're saying, rather than just not like it, you should discover well, it, whether it's true or not. Where is the basis of truth? Because there is a truth. There is a foundation that isn't moving. You know, a hell uh, has been described like a bottomless pit where there is nothing that's stable that you can grasp onto or hang on to. And it's created when, when there's nothing that you can hold on to. Imagine just falling and not being able to just stable yourself or get your balance. That's where so many people are at in their belief systems right now. They're just moving from one thing to another and, and they're falling through their belief systems, like falling through the sky. And every time someone comes up with something, well, this is what I think. And this is, it doesn't matter what you think. It matters what is. If what you think is wrong, it's wrong. It's not right because you think it. There has to be some foundation for which it, you can have stability, which you can stand on and, and believe in and know it's true. And in it, you find, if it's true, you find good and blessing through it. There's a reason I believe what I believe. And there's reason why over a billion people around the planet believe in, in Christ. This isn't some small movement that just an upstart movement that just started 30 years ago. This is something that has uh, been a, a stable foundation for people throughout time. It's been proven over and over again. We believe in gravity because it's been proven over and over again. We believe in a sunrise and a sunset because it's been proven over and over again. This is something that has been stable for people for generation to generation to generation to generation. And I'm pretty sure if you're listening to this, you have somebody in your lineage that has that experienced stability and strength through the truth that we're talking about. So we're not sharing what we think we're th we're sharing what has been passed down from generation and has been a stability for people from generation to generation there was a uh, i was reading this book it was on secular humanism and it was you ever seen those coexist bumper stickers yeah, right and, they're all over and it's it's a ploy to to show that they're inclusive um so the the idea of coexist is not really like you know, it doesn't seem like an issue, but really what you're doing is, is because Christianity makes a truth claim that God is the judge of morality, that it's not humans as being the authority of what is right and wrong, that they try to cover up with this religion could be true. This could really like, obviously the, the author was saying, obviously we all coexist. Like everybody's coexisting with each yeah. other. That's not the issue. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to stifle the truth that Christianity claims to be. And you could see on the rest of their website, he was, he went to, I don't remember what website it was, but the rest of their website, there was like mockeries of the other, like member, like material you can buy. That's like, mocking Jesus, mocking the cross. That's all the rest of it. But then they got the one that's coexist. It sounds really cute and nice, but really it's a stifle of the truth. And, and C.S. Lewis has a quote. He was talking about how, because because people think all religions can be okay. Like, yeah, no, yeah. either one is true or they're all wrong because they all contradict each other. So he was saying that this is either true or one of them has to be true or they're all false because it really just ends up being, this is just something that soothes our conscience from the fear of death, but really hold no importance in yeah, reality. You know, it, what's interesting is that the whole coexist thing. And I think um, when you talk about like, we just need to all just get, we, we have had multiple religions for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And this thought that Christianity is exclusive. Mm -hmm. Christianity includes anybody who wants to believe, and it's exactly. been that way for years. There is no excluding people. If you want to believe in Christ and follow Christ, you become a Christian. Mm -hmm. 
Anybody who wants to follow Christ becomes a Christian. Yeah, because what's a Christian? A follower of Christ. Exactly. If you want to follow Christ, you become a Christian. When you become a follower of his word and what his life and you follow Christ and you hear his voice, there is no excluding people no. from it. It's no, there's no saying you can't come here. There's there's none of the, that taking place. However, um, there is this belief that all of these other religions are far more inclusive when in reality they're not no. inclusive you if you as a if if you and it just doesn't make any sense if if you don't want to follow Christ you're not going to yeah there's no excluding yeah. you just chose not to follow Christ yeah we're trying to invite people to we're actually trying to invite people. We spend thousands and thousands of dollars yeah. to invite people to come and follow Christ. And yeah. we're the most exclusive. What? That's it what just I, makes no sense. We spend millions of dollars yeah. sending missionaries all over the world. It makes no sense. To bring the truth of Christ to people yeah. so that they can follow Christ. Yeah. It, it's, it's based on the fact that we're trying to introduce people to what we believe and what this is to follow Christ and to experience what the we've experienced is, in Christ. It's because we don't value their truth. So, in a because it isn't says, true. It, we, in a culture that says, "It's this is my truth." Truth is really becoming relative. There's no like, "This is a fact." Like two plus two eventually is probably yeah, going to be left up but to they opinion. Don't, in the same breath, they don't respect our truth. Yeah, they, it's such a. It's such, if you want to take that position that in Christianity we don't respect your truth. Okay. But you don't You're respect our thing. truth. Exactly. You you you've done same the thing. same thing. Except I'm not ba- making a big deal about it. I'm not <laughs> hating you because exactly. you didn't respect my truth. Money. But you're hating me because I didn't respect your truth. Right. I'm not. Money. I'm letting you make the decision you made, but your truth. But I just don't believe that's true. In fact, I believe it's deception. Mm-hmm. You don't think what I believe is true. You think what I'm saying is deception. Except you you're. Stifle me. Yeah. Except you're hating me. For that mm-hmm. position, the same, by the way, position you hold mm-hmm. against it. Christianity is the most persecuted faith, and that's what makes it so real. It's, it's, it, the, the king of all of these other religions is the same king. He exactly. just got a lot of variety. He's yep. trying to reach a bunch of people, a number of, but to try to take people from Christianity. He's trying to create the conflict where with God, there's only one way way exactly and with christ there's only one he and and i didn't say it you can be angry at me but i'm not the one that said it mm-hmm. jesus said it mm-hmm. so either you believe jesus is a liar and jesus is a heretic or a lunatic or he's the real deal and what he said is true i believe he's the real deal and what he said is true yeah. so if you're angry with me because i believe him that's a problem you need to deal with yeah but don't get mad at me for saying these things when Jesus is the one that said them and I happen to believe him. I said uh, true followers of Christ are the most inclusive and loving group of people on this planet. Prove yeah. me wrong. And people do not like that. And I Because they there. can't prove you wrong, no. so they get angry. So I, I sat there on, on TikTok and I was on a live and I just had it there and I, I always watch. I wait before I start and then I see a lot of people say, is this satire? This has got to be a joke. Is this like a bit? And I'm like, no, but the fact that you think it's a joke is showing me how indoctrinated you've become. And people don't like that word because these are two like these are two words that really offend people. When you hear when you hear that Christianity is love and inclusive, woo, because you're conditioned to think we're narrow minded and bigoted. And then when I say you've been indoctrinated, ooh, because you've been taught that Christians, they just, and what does indoctrination mean? It literally means taking a set of beliefs without using critical thinking. Majority of Christians, if you are going to follow Jesus, it goes against the grain of the world. It goes against everything. If you were just to put it on neutral and just do what everybody else is doing. It, but if you're going to be a Christian, it combats Literally, tell me what culture preaches. I'll tell you Jesus says the direct opposite. Yeah. You best believe, you better critically think about this if you're going to do the complete opposite that all your neighbors are doing, that there must have been something 
that changed your, your set of beliefs, that caused you to believe in this God, that you're willing to follow him yeah. regardless of the you popularity. Know, you know, it's interesting because uh, let's go back to the Bible quick. And if you're listening to this, you say, well, I don't, I want to tell you a historical part of the Bible. So in Acts, um, these followers, disciples of Jesus and followers started sharing the stories of Jesus, started sharing the truth of his resurrection, his death and his resurrection, and many people started following. And the Jews that uh, were part of one, they crucified him. And, and I'm, not, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to be anti-Semitic because I'm not. I don't, I think we all put Jesus on the cross. I think it was just the Jewish people and the Roman Empire that together crucified Jesus. It, that's a historical fact. Our Savior is right. Jewish. So. Yeah, our Savior was Jewish. I have no problem with Jewish people. I love them, pray for them. That's not what I'm getting at. I don't want it to be a misunderstanding. Yeah. But the, the, the high priest and the Sanhedrin would meet because so many people, these followers of Christ were going to cities and people were leaving the Jewish faith to become Christians. Yeah. And they began to get worried about it. So they found people preaching at the temple. They took them, they flogged them, beat them, and then brought them in and told them to not preach any longer. And they were going to crucify them. But one of the leaders of the Sanhedrin said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's wait. Because if this isn't true, if there's no truth in yeah. this, just like all the rebels of the past, mm -hmm. once you kill their leader, once you chop the head off, it passes away and it mm -hmm. stops and it ha doesn't happen anymore. But if this is true, we're fighting against God and we will be the ones that get our head chopped off. So let's just let him go and see what happens. And they follow him. He had enough influence that they follow him. And they may have killed Jesus, but they didn't chop the head off of the leader because he was resurrected of which they didn't want to believe happened, even though there was evidence that it had it had happened, right? And that movement that was roughly about 500 people when Jesus was on earth, 12 disciples, he had influence about 150, but 500 that really became followers of Christ before his crucifixion, and then after in Acts, over 3,000 people. I mean, 3,000 in the scope of the entire globe has become 1 billion people. For a lie? For a lie? Over 2,000 years ago? For a lie that took place 2,000 years ago, there are over a billion followers? At some point, you have to use your reasonable, logical brain and ask yourself, if this was a lie... If this wasn't real, if there was no power in this, if there was no such thing in the miracles that have taken place and, and the truth of it, then how is it that over a billion people are followers of this truth now? And if it wasn't true, why would it be around? Because every ancient language of the day, the Roman Empire persecuted Christians and then became a Christian nation. They were set against yeah. Christian, killing them in the Colosseum, and then became a Christian empire. Hmm. At what point do you look at history and say there's historical proof, there's logical proof, there's experiential proof based on today, where you stop and look at it and say, hmm, maybe what it's saying is true. And maybe I don't deserve all the good things that happen. I don't deserve it. But every good thing that I've had in my life has come from God. So I rejoice. And when the bad things happen in my life, I walk through them as well. You know why I walk through them? Because God is with me yeah. through those things. So the person who's saying, why does bad things happen? It only happens, it, that, that thinking only happens when people who are not believers don't know that God will walk through it with you this is and not carry you through it. Yeah, it's not, the, not end. the end. And that's, what, and that's why that this faith grew. It grew from persecution from Christians that were willing to, to face slaughter, yeah. to face terrible execution and gladly doing it because death was not something they, they feared anymore because their savior defeated death. That this was, this is what the good news was and why it, it flourished and expanded. It, it's different 
this is why it's so different than any other religion that, you know, Islam got extended by the sword and conquering. Christians expanded by them being the persecuted and imprisoned and enslaved and executed. This is why it grew. And it continues to grow because of that, even in Burkina Faso, where they're shooting Christians right now. But listen, don't, don't make a mistake mistake about this type of thinking if you're here and you're you don't believe in god you're stiff arming yeah the cross and resurrection you're stiff arming god saying i don't believe it and then bad things happen to you and say well why do bad hand things happen to good people whoa, whoa, whoa and then you blame god for it <laughs> wait a minute you've been stiff arming him the whole time we have removed god from the public square and then we wonder why all the things happen that happen mm. you removed school god from schools long ago at some point you have to you have to cross the lines to recognize as we've moved God from our schools we like even this question if inclusiveness is such a big deal why isn't the Bible still in our public schools libraries what is it that's Ooh. so bad about the Bible that you don't want it in the public schools, but you'll put things in the public schools that talk to kid about sex when they're second graders uh what what is it that that appalls you about the Bible so much you can't have it in the public school in the library? It, 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 there's no logical sense to it. And I think what and we we're need to, we're exclusive. We're, we're exclusive, exclusive, but 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 the other side says we can't put the Bible in the public school. The difference between and this is what I, I want to convey to people that again that aren't Christians. The reason why I make the the statement Christians are the most inclusive and loving group of people on this planet. A culture that says cancel, a culture that says discredit and berate them and attack their character if they don't hold the same beliefs that I do. The the counter to that is the Christian worldview that would that Jesus, if I'm going to be a true follower of Christ, I don't have that luxury to draw a line in the sand for those that disagree with me. Jesus tells me to love my enemies, bless those that curse me. Jesus tells me to regard people as better than myself. Jesus tells me that if I'm going to become the greatest, I need to become the least. That this that this gospel is included to everybody. Yeah. But the doorway into the kingdom of God is a denial of yourself. That's the problem. And that's the problem that people don't want to give up. They say, well, it's not inclusive. I said, yeah, it is. Well, it's conditional. Yeah. You have to leave your sin at the door. You need to deny yourself and put your trust in Christ. The reason why Jesus came to the world is to pick up the tab that you owed. He was, he came to clear the debt that you owed and get you off the path of lake of fire. Yeah. And he would, he came, the Bible says that Jesus says, I have not come to, to judge the world. I've come to save the world. The second time he comes back, there's no there's no time left now for ignorance. Jesus came first to save the world, redeem the world, rescue what would had had been what had been lost, which was paradise with God and a relationship with him in the garden. He came to restore what our purpose was here in the first place. You know, uh that's good news. Yeah, exactly. And yet there will be people who push back on it. Death is defeated. They don't want to believe it. No. They're, I'm not believing that. I don't think it's, I, I disagree. They'll fight it. They'll, they'll make arguments against it. Isn't it interesting how if what you're saying is true and the truth, that's good news. Yeah, that's great. That I can know I'm going to spend an eternity with God. Mm-hmm. But, but there are people when I say, you're going to spend an eternity with God, they're like, I don't want to, though. Exactly. I want to spend an eternity in this world doing what I want to do. And then get mad with the consequences of that action. Well, you'll get what you want. Exactly. You're going to get to do whatever you want to do in a world where everybody does whatever they want to do. The lake of fire. And what you'll discover is in a world where there is no morality, where everybody's truth is their own truth, in a world you will experience separation from God, and it will be the worst torment. You have no idea. When you, and people, because people relate relationship to God, to church. Yeah. And they've, they've had some experience to church, and it was boring. 
they interpreted what was done as being exclusive or or you're bad, you better do these things, you're going, it was a behavior-based message, all of those things. So they think that's what it is. A relationship with God is like a relationship with your best friend. Yeah. That's what that's what it's all about. So so if you come into relationship with him, it's about relationship with God. You're going to get what you want. And if that's something you're like, man, I'm going to get to spend an eternity with a God who loves me, a God who had created this world for me and showed his love to me in this world. This is just scratching the surface of what eternity will look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm looking forward to that. But the point I was going to make is if I told you Netflix is giving a free year to everybody who signs up today. You'd be like, well, I don't know if that's true, but I hope it is. Exactly. Or, or the, the, the Congress just voted that they're giving everybody $2,500 back from their taxes. You're like, really? Is that true? And you may even be researching it to find out if it's true. Like you're hoping it's true yeah. because somebody told you that. And you're like, I hope it's true. Or they cleared your student debt loans. Right. Because we lean into good news. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is why people are fighting this good news. Yeah, exactly. What's the spirit in us trying to defend the deception we have? What's the pride? It's like we don't want it to be good news. We don't want it to be the right truth. There's something in us fighting it. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to figure out. Yeah. And so, you know, for those of you that are listening right now, we are all on a path. There's a road, there's a narrow door, the Bible describes it as. And the best way that I can say that and to, to kind of wrap up what we've been talking about as far as we're all on the path of destruction, whether it's, you know, a big road trip. I'm about to road trip to Wyoming. It's 16 hours. So however many miles that is, a lot of miles. And at the end of that road, let's say you're taking a road trip right now, and it could be short, it could be just around the block, or it could be, you know, you're traveling to Wyoming, it's really long. And so because you're traveling such a far distance, you don't see the consequences, you don't see, you know, how that's an, how it's an issue, you don't, you don't have a sense of urgency, but we're all on a path. And the Bible talks about we're all on a path to destruction. At the end of this road trip, there is a cliff. Jesus is the roadblock in the way that is a detour and you turn from your destruction and you can receive the gift of life that Jesus came to bring you. That is literally the gospel. It's nothing that you can do. It's nothing that you can earn. It's placing your trust and no longer here and you're no longer the God. We've seen how that's went for humanity. And the real re person you need to blame is not God, but people that used their dominion over this world and brought sin, death, and corruption here. It's not God's fault, but placing the trust you have in yourself and placing it in Christ. And when you do that, you will encounter your real identity. You'll encounter the true purpose of your life, and you will encounter true love, that this is a tangible relationship that you can have. We're not talking about a guy in a history book. We're talking from a place like we know God. Like this is not a what if, a theor like a theory, like we know God and you can too. If you seek him, you will find him. Amen. <laughs> Usually you have something to say. No. Nope. Anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe uh, this video. Uh, and share this with a friend. People need Jesus. We're on the path to destruction. That sounds pretty depressing, but that's why we do this. Uh, because the good news is that Christ steps in the way and he saved us. And those that put their trust in him will not be put to shame. <laughs>